Welcome to Orchard Grove, everyone. Thank you for coming today to see the cooking demo that we're putting on. Um, it's easy cooking for two. Uh, Orchard Grove, for those that haven't been here before, is an independent assisted and memory care community. Uh, we offer a variety of living options as far as studio apartments, uh, one bedroom and two bedroom apartments. Um, and we'll be happy to show that to anyone that is interested after. One of our key differentiators, what really makes us unique, is our dining program. We have a restaurant that's open from 7 in the morning to 7 at night, offering high-end dining um, options. Things from crab cake appetizers, to filet mignon, to shrimp scampi, to fabulous desserts, um, all done by our culinary director, Nina Quirk, who were, is going to be um, showing you a fabulous, easy to prepare um, meal for two. So thank you, Nina, I'll hand it off to you. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so I don't wanna take all the credit. I have an incredible team behind me that helps to uh, manage this seven to seven restaurant. We just also launched our bistro last week, which we're serving um, three days a week now for lunchtime. We're offering um, homemade pizza, homemade pastas, uh, composed salad plates, and a variety of hors d'oeuvres and desserts. Everything, of course, homemade. Um, but today here we're focusing on um, maybe some folks that might be living at home and um, they're cooking for two. They have a small group to cook for and that can often be a real challenge. Uh, cooking for bulk is a lot easier than cooking for small groups. So I started thinking about what would be easy for um, anybody to do with very little knowledge of cooking. Um, so I came up with egg souffle cups, which um, you could call egg McMuffins, Mick, Let's lose that. But egg muffins, um, and you can basically put any type of flavoring you want into these. So as long as you like eggs, this is a very simple dish for you. Um, it can be served for breakfast, lunch, dinner. Uh, it's incredibly healthy. There's only a few ingredients in it, and they're all very recognizable. So I'm going to get started. Um, I've measured out just some eggs over here. So essentially, um, in this recipe, we're cooking this uh, product will yield 12. So we're gonna do 12 eggs, so one per muffin cup. Um, very simple. Just... Now the fun part about this is you can actually add any flavoring you want to it and it's going to take on whatever that flavor is. So I just um, went with very basic ingredients like a little bit of garlic powder, just a couple pinches. I mean, you really could eyeball this. We could give you measurements, but using your best judgment is always what I prefer. Um, a little bit of onion powder. I am mean, gonna add a little bit of salt to this this time and a little bit of fresh ground pepper. Now, you could put any herb you want in this. You could put um, roasted red peppers, you could put marinated mushrooms, you could um, put broccoli, roasted vegetables. Literally, the options are limitless. Um, and we're just gonna add a little bit of heavy cream to it. So it's kind of like a quiche filling. Um, it's kind of your basic startup for a quiche. So I'm just gonna whip these until they're combined. Now, you can add raw vegetables, you can add sauteed vegetables, you can add roasted vegetables, like I said before. Um, in this particular one, we're gonna do a little bit of peppers, onions. I also have some already sauteed mushrooms. I have sausage, I have bacon, I have ham, broccoli, spinach, um, and then a variety of cheeses. So I'm gonna kinda do a little sample platter, if you will, with a bunch of different options going on. Uh, when I add onion and peppers to things, I always like to saute it first because I feel like it has a big bite to it. Um, peppers can be really strong in certain dishes and onion can take over the flavor if you're not careful. So 
sauteing them kind of mellows out the flavor. In this case, I'm going to want it in a small dice. So I'm just going to do that. And alongside of this, we're going to serve this with a salad um, just because it balances the meal. So I can add some greens to it. I can have fruit, nuts in the salad, cheeses. And now you have a very full meal as opposed to just what could be served as a snack or something very simple uh, for breakfast. You know, there's no trick for this. You still cry when you cut onions, no matter how much you cook. Also, now I'm just going to cut up a pepper. And we can saute these together, so um, it'll go nice and quick. I always prefer cooking with red peppers. I find that um, green peppers can be a little bit bitter. Red peppers have a little more sweetness to them. So I think I'm going to use red pepper, plus uh, I particularly like the color of the red peppers. You can see them in a lot of things. So. So I just got back from uh, three weeks in Italy, in Tuscany, and I was explaining to all my friends here in the community that the quality of the ingredients is a lot better in Italy, if you will, because most people are growing um, in their backyards. So one thing that we've kind of lost in American tradition is the... Uh, the farm or the home garden. You know, we have people that do do it still, but it's kind of becoming a lost art. And really now with um, people like myself who have their masters in gastronomy or are studying food activism in the field, they're starting to now try and make that a movement, like push it back to actually um, the 1950s when the Victory Gardens were very popular. Um, that's, there's a big movement now to get back to that because the quality of the produce will um, increase and basically everybody locally will have more access to it if we're growing more locally. So now I have the pan going here and I'm just going to put a little bit of canola oil in. Um, sometimes when I saute things I like to do a little bit of butter and a little bit of canola oil but right now I'm just going to use canola. Just move a little bit. Just gonna saute a little. So olive oil has um, a low burning point, which means that um, if the if it stays on high temperature for a long time, it's gonna start burning, and it will make the flavors get a little bit more rancid. So um, you can flavor the canola oil with a little bit of olive oil just to give it that flavor, but then to still maintain that uh, ability to cook without burning. So. That's why we decide to um, cook with canola, and there's often a lot of canola olive oil blends. Um, and also, like if you're making a salad dressing, which I will be making in a little while, if you're making the salad uh, vinaigrette of some sort, just all, straight olive oil will make it very bitter. So you really do need to cut your oils, and often, and I might be alone in this, but I also use two acids when I do my vinaigrettes, meaning that if I have lemon, I might add another vinegar. If I have balsamic white vinegar, I might add uh, apple cider vinegar to it too. So I like the combination of acids to give the, um, you know, like a nice strong flavor, but not overwhelming with in either direction. So once these are sauteed, and really it's only going to take a few minutes, I'm just looking for the onions to get a little bit translucent. Um, and so it will only take a few minutes. We're going to add it to our egg mixture. And then we can basically um, pick out whatever toppings we want and add those in as well. So some we'll just do with peppers and onions. Some we'll add mushrooms to. Some I'm going to add some meats and cheeses to. Um, OK. So. We're almost done here. 
That cooked up really quick, actually. So we just have a little bit of sauteed veg there. We have our egg mixture here. Um, I think for the sake of this batch, we're going to go with just a simple cheddar. Um, now we could shred it. Now, and this is something, truth be told, I like to shred my own cheeses. Why? Because when you buy cheese and it's prepackaged and it's shredded, a lot of times they've added ingredients to keep it from caking. They're called anti-caking agents. And these things that are actually like wood pulp um, don't really belong in your food. So I like to buy fresh cheeses. I like to grate them myself. And that way you can guarantee that you're just eating cheese and you're not eating wood pulp. <laughs> Yeah, yep. It's called cellulose is the ingredient that you want to avoid. You know, they say it's not harmful for health, and I'm sure it might be perfectly fine. But to me, you want ingredients that are recognizable to you, something that is grown in nature, something that you can make out of something that's grown in nature. Um, cellulose, not really sure what that is. Now, I'm going to actually pour these into the cups, and then I'm going to fill them individually with the toppings. The biggest thing is on this is you're going to want to make sure you spray the pan very well. Um, you could line them with muffin liners. The only thing is if you do, don't use the paper liners. Use the aluminum liners because the egg will soak up the paper and it will just... So I actually prefer not to do them at all. But I always feel bad for somebody that has to wash the dishes after these, <laughs> um, which at home it's me. So. Um, when I was a personal chef, I used to make these a lot for my, res my clients um, because they could keep for the week. So you could, you know, pack a couple different flavors in. It's a protein hit. Um, one of the biggest nutrients we need as we age is protein. These are pretty good for our residents. Now, sometimes this is an easy thing to do is to mix right in here. Mix and pour. For the sake of this, I didn't do that, but... That is a very simple way to keep the mess down. Now we're just going to fill our muffin liners. So now this is just egg, cream, salt, pepper, a little bit of seasoning and cheddar cheese, nothing to it. Also kids like these too. So if you're a single parent, these are wonderful for kids because you can, they can fill them with whatever flavors they like and it's a very quick, easy meal to eat in the morning on your way out the door, which I know with two young children can be a real challenge sometimes. Once we finish cooking them, the best thing to do after is let them cool completely on the countertop. Um, you don't even want any heat to them because when you pack them up, you're going to put them in a, a Tupperware container and you're going to separate them by parchment so they don't get all stuck together. But you want to make sure that, that the heat is out of that container. Otherwise, it's going to continue to make them cook and mush and it will kind of kill them. <laughs> So here I'm doing a sausage mushroom one because I just think that goes really well together. I could add the um, peppers and onions to it that we sauteed. But here I have some um, already pre-cooked grounds of sausage that we use. Okay. The next one I think we'll do, I don't know, how about a little bit of bacon? And you don't have to mix it up. You could do one whole pan of the same thing. You could do you know, any sort of combo you really want. So maybe I should do. It's fine because you can individualize it. You can totally individualize it. You can you know, serve it with a fruit salad on the side. You can serve it with a cup of soup. You could, um, you know, uh, just a piece of bread would be fine. But I like the idea that it is healthy. It is very easy. Just add a little bit of. And I just think they're pretty too. Like you get a lot of color in them. We can do a little ham. Ooh. 
How about some broccoli with the feta? You can individualize this for the kids. You can have this for a party. You could really, I mean, these are just very flexible, easy options for cooking. I'm going to hand this off to our kitchen to bake. And in the meantime, while we're waiting for that to bake, I'm going to do a little um, salad dressing demonstration, and I'm going to put together some composed salads. I really love composed salads, and I'm so lucky here in this community because all my residents love them, too. Um, so it's fun because you get to be creative, and salads are very simple. You really just um, you want to balance the flavors, make sure there's something sweet in there, make sure there's something savory in there. And um, I always like to have color on my plate. So I think that here we're going to do a nice mixed green salad. I am big into figs. And while they're not in season, they're just going out of season right now. In September, they were huge. And where I was in Italy, there were fig trees everywhere. So that was really nice. So there's two different ways to do salad dressing. One is to pre-mix it and dress your salad in it. The other way is to drizzle your salad. I think that that's, um, people like them different ways. If you don't like a lot of salad dressing, you usually like a drizzle. If you like your salad to have a nice flavor to it, you like it tossed. Um, I personally like a tossed salad. Uh, and I do mine in layers when I do it at home. But when I'm here, I always make a vinaigrette, like an emulsion. An emulsion is just the coming together of the olive oil and the vinegar. Um, and it kind of creates like a thickness, and that is what an emulsion is. I'm going to start with, um, in my trusty mortar and pestle, I'm just going to put half a piece of garlic, because I'm not making a ton of salads right now, and garlic can really kill it. With a little too much garlic can go a long way for somebody on their breath. <laughs> so. Um, I like to do, you have to kind of get something that's granular in there to break down the garlic itself. So I put in the salt and we'll just break it down. Now we're making this an herb vinaigrette. Um, so I have three different types of herbs right here. Actually I have four. I have mint, cilantro, curly parsley and sage. Um, I would go with any of those flavor combinations. And to me, the more herbs, the merrier. And the more you mix them, the more flavor profiles you're going to have. The biggest thing is you don't really want to take like big bites of herbs. You want them to be like folded into it. So if I just chop them up a little bit, and then I'm going to mash them into my mortar and pestle. Everything here has been cleaned prior. Just saying. Do a little bit of mint. I love mint. It adds a ton of brightness to things. Um, so uh, often people will ask me what's in something, and my secret ingredient is mint. So I sneak it into certain things, and people don't know about it. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> and um, mint grows everywhere. Um, if you look on sides of roads, you'll see it growing. I have um, a degree in gastronomy where I learned how to forage for wild foods. And I often find myself walking down the street just picking herbs because I see them on the side of the road. And a lot of people just don't know how to identify them. But um, you know, the birds come and eat off a deck somewhere that somebody's growing a pot of it. And then you know, next thing you know, it's growing down the road. So, it's nice to make use of what's growing naturally. Um, so I'm just going to throw those in there, mash them up a little bit. So I didn't chop them real fine, because it's going to mash up a little bit more as I do this. And I can already smell the mint. of what it looks like right now. So we have just kind of, it's almost like a paste, but not really, because there's no real moisture that we've added to it other than the juices from the herbs and the juice of the garlic. So now I'm going to add, this is white balsamic vinegar. So I'm just going to add a little bit to this. And that will help me clean off my mortar. And 
And then, like I said, I always like two acids. So I have the balsamic vinegar, and then I also have the lemon juice. This is kind of a trusty tool. I like it. So we have that. So that's all mixed, and now it's loose enough that I can pour it out of here and add the rest of my ingredients. I like wood mortar and pestles, but you can get um, some made out of marble. The only thing is things slip around a little bit more in the marble, so I do prefer this. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh ground pepper to it. Now, since we have a fig salad, I picked up some fig balsamic glaze. I'm putting very little of that in here just to add some sweetness. You have to balance the tart when you have a um, vinaigrette. So you could use honey, you could use sugar. A lot of times people use honey or sugar. But I'm going to add glaze this time and see how it works. Vinaigrettes are really simple. You can kind of whip up any type of vinaigrette you want very quickly. Um, usually I just like to pick out one flavor out of the salad and make that type of vinaigrette. So if it's a grilled peach salad, we might have a peach vinaigrette. If it's a raspberry salad, I might make a raspberry vinaigrette. Um, but there's a lot of room for playing with that. And again, um, I'm going to do two different types of oil. I'm going to do canola and I'm going to do some extra virgin olive oil. And this is actually the really good stuff. Um, this is the stuff we pay big money from, from Sid Wainer. Um, because it's an imported olive oil, the uh, American olive oil market is not as big um, as it is in Europe. So the Greek olive oil, the Spanish olive oil, the Italian olive oil, those good imported olive oils are kind of important here for cooking. California is just starting to get into the production of olive oil, so you're starting to see some new brands pop up, thankfully, because um, we can't just consume all international stuff. So here, now, you really just want to drizzle. And a couple other things you could do. You can mix vinaigrettes in a blender. Um, we have a nice Vitamix in the kitchen. I just throw all the ingredients in it and go zip, and it's done in two minutes. Um, you can do it in like a measuring cup because you can measure out your ingredients. I eyeball because I just know what I'm looking for. But essentially, when you're doing any sort of vinaigrette, it's three to one. So it's three parts of oil and one part vinegar or acid. So. Um, a lot of people don't know that. They think it's even parts. So, kind of need to. Now, I would like a slower drizzle, to be honest with you. I should have put this in a little bit better. The slower the drizzle, the quicker the emulsification happens. So when you have too much oil, it can kind of separate. As long as you keep your arm moving, it's not going to separate. But really, it's about combining. OK. And. Most importantly, and I couldn't taste test the raw egg, but you got to taste things. So the only way to know if this is going to be good is to taste it. It's pretty balanced. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more salt to it. I pick up the garlic. I can taste the herbs. I can taste the olive oil. And I'm going to put a little bit more of the glaze in for a little bit more sweetness. Okay. Okay. And basically, I'm just going to toss the greens. You don't really need to toss the um, 
the whole salad, I'm gonna finish it with the toppings. That way, um, you don't have a lot of things like bleeding onto the plate. So when you start adding toppings into a salad, like if you were putting pomegranate seeds or blueberries or strawberries or any sort of fruit, they, their juices come out, and especially when you dress them. So when you're making a composed salad plate in a restaurant style atmosphere and not at home, you would dress the salad, then put the toppings on, and that way you can kind of avoid that plate drip. Do a little quick drizzle here. Get some of the herbs. You can certainly overdress mixed greens. It's probably my number one complaint when I go to restaurants. Of course, I don't like to ever complain, so I don't, but I um, often if you go and you order a mixed green salad, it's like drenched and it's dripping and it's it's not like eating a salad. You want nice light fresh leaves that hold up to the dressing um, otherwise it's going to wilt real quickly so i have some candied pecans i'm going to put those on i have some fresh blue cheese it's going to be so delicious can't wait and then i have fresh figs I'm such a fig enthusiast. Um, sometimes if you ask my residents if they order a fruit plate and I'm the one making it in the kitchen, they'll get little treats on there, like little um, figs or they'll get some ra fresh raspberries. I do try to buy what's in season. Um, you know, we do carry melons year round and some things like that, but the best quality produce is gonna be in season. So right now we actually need to get some persimmons. So. There's a little composed salad, very simple, but really delicious. Once my eggs are done, we're just gonna place this here and that will be our little easy cooking for two. Um, can I invite you all to ask some questions? Yes. You can actually, yep. She just asked if you could freeze them. You absolutely can freeze them. Again, I will remind you when you do that, make sure that you're cooling them down all the way. Make sure that you're lining parchment in between the layers. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So we're just waiting for them to come out of the oven. Any other questions while we wait? Yes, sir. Do you ever wash with water and greens? Do we wash? No, actually, um, he asked if our greens are, are, if I wash them. Now, most of the mixed greens you buy are actually already triple washed, so you don't have to wash them. Iceberg lettuce, romaine lettuce, any loose leaf lettuces that are sold in the head form, um, those you definitely want to wash. Um, it's funny because whenever we get farm fresh lettuce here, the uh, chefs go out of their minds because lettuce has a ton of dirt in it. Um, so, you know, I like to buy hydroponic lettuces sometimes too to cut back on the um, cleaning because we'll take five gallon drums and have to clean the lettuce and it's not that easy actually. <laughs> um, it can make a big mess and, you know, you really need to strain it out a couple times and wash it over. Um, but, you know, these greens have already been washed when we purchased them. Other greens you need to wash. Okay, it looks like our Egg souffle cups are out of the oven. These smell, you're not here to smell this, but they smell delicious. These we did in mini muffin tins too. So um, I like this size for an hors d'oeuvre. A lot of people do little quiche cups. These are perfect for a little hors d'oeuvre at a party. You can put a little um, dollop of sriracha or you know, um, you could make some sort of chutney and put it on top, a little bit of herbs, basically whatever you want. Again, these are very, very flexible and forgiving for the average chef. I think that will wrap up our cooking demonstration here today. Does anybody have any questions or any commentary on the food? Hopefully everybody's enjoying it. It's nice and quiet in here. That's always a good sign for a chef. Um, so I want to thank you all for joining me and hopefully we'll be doing this again sometime.